So I do think that um, there's going to be more and more data on using some of the agents that have been approved in acute myeloid leukemia, for example, the IDH inhibitors in the appropriate patient and the BCL2 inhibitors, whether or not that's venetoclax, which as you know, is approved in CLL and AML, or for example, nevitoclax. I think there's some research being done on autoimmune therapies, but that is um, probably a little bit um, further down the road for myelofibrosis. A lot of my patients ask me whether or not immune therapy will ever be the right thing to do for myelofibrosis. And I think that's, especially with the progress that's been made in chimeric antigen T-cell receptor therapy and lymphoid diseases, we have a long way to go before we know if that's something that we can use in myeloid diseases. We need uh, agents that are going to be safe to use that will help anemia and the, throm and the thrombocytopenia of myelofibrosis. And we also need to know when and in whom those treatments work the best. And of course, novel agents, which the more we learn from the basic scientists about what's happening in myelofibrosis and advanced MPNs in general, the more we can target those diseases. And finally, in um, the sort of growth or the hopefully the ability to use um, this newest form of interferon in patients with ET or PV in the United States is moving forward. Um, this newest interferon, rogue pig interferon, may have fewer side effects, is given less often, and has good data out of Europe. And hopefully we can um, have the appropriate registry, registrational data accrue here in the United States. So 